Hey everyone, welcome to week four of our Beatitude lessons. This lesson lines up perfectly with what we will be recognizing this Sunday during worship. During worship, we are going to be honoring All Saints Sunday. This is the Sunday where we will recognize and honor our church members who have died this past year. It's a sad and somber Sunday for many people. And that's why it is a perfect tie-in to our lesson of our beatitude this week. Our beatitude this week is, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And with that in mind, let's get into our welcoming question. Our question this week is, what is something that makes you laugh? What is something that makes you cry? Now, before we get into the meat of this beatitude, let's remember where we are at the beatitudes. Remember that this is part of the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus walked up onto the top of a mountain. And remember, mountains were considered such a holy place during Jesus' time. So that was so important to Jesus to be able to teach these Beatitudes on a mountaintop. All the people gathered around and sat and listened with great anticipation to what Jesus was about to tell them. So this is why the Beatitudes are so important. They were an incredibly important lesson for Jesus to share with his followers. And this week's beatitude, like I said earlier, is blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And that is from Matthew. Remember, Matthew's in the New Testament, and it's a gospel, chapter 5, verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. There were people in Jesus' time, just like today, who were taught that crying was a shameful thing to do, that mourning showed weakness and was too vulnerable. Many of the rich and powerful people spent their time trying not to cry. They focused on gathering money and control to feel strong and unshakable. But in this promise, Jesus speaks to people who mourn or cry and praises them. Why do you think he did this? I bet everyone here has cried before. I know I have. Why do you think people cry? Why do you think people get sad? Crying shows we are alive that we are aware of our emotions and our feelings that surround us. Crying also shows that we are brave. Crying shows that we are willing to feel our pain and our hurt. And even it shows that we're willing to share somebody else's pain with them. You're not trying to block the pain around you and keep your distance from it. Tears and crying are important, especially when what makes us cry is painful or hard to hold on to. It's also a beautiful way to connect with God. Did you know that God cries too? And that Jesus cried during his time on earth? Jesus cries for everyone. God's heart is wide and holds all of the pain of everyone hurting throughout the whole world. And when we cry, it's a way of sharing in God's heart. Jesus promises here that God will comfort us when we cry. And Jesus promised that God would bring comfort and make things right for all the people listening who face injustice, shame, and poverty. 
which caused them to cry and to grieve. One way God brings comfort is through you. When you offer your hand or kind words, especially to someone who is sad, you are God's comfort to that person. Crying together and being vulnerable always helps us belong with each other and they bring us closer to God. With that in mind, it is now time for a weekly blessing. So now remember, a blessing is something that you receive. So open your hands up and hold them out like you're about to receive a gift and hear these words of blessing. May God bless you when you laugh and when you cry. May God bless you when you laugh and when you cry, when you're happy and when you're sad. God understands all of our feelings. And now it is time to grab your discussion question sheets and any of your coloring utensils as we begin to imagine this scripture. All right, so here is the question for my older kids out there. So we learned in Jesus's promise in this beatitude that they will be comforted. Those who mourn will be comforted. But we also learned that one way God brings comfort is through us and how we care for other people. So your question for today is how can you be God's comfort to someone else this week? How can you be God's comfort to someone else this week? And for my younger kids out there, here's your question. Share a time where you cried, when you were sad. What happened? Who was there to comfort you? Who was there to hold your hand, to cry with you? Who was there to comfort you? So my younger kids, share a time when you cried and you were sad, what happened? Who comforted you? All right, y'all probably know by now, but this is my favorite time of the week, the weekly challenge. And this is a really fun one today. So in your email this week, there was an activity sheet and you need that activity sheet for this weekly challenge. So how do you comfort a friend, someone that is sad? Some people send messages or cards to encourage them when they are sad. So this weekly challenge is for you to send some cards to people who are sad. The activity sheet is a card that you can fold and you can make and you can send to somebody. The front of the card says, when you're feeling sad, remember. So on the inside of the card, you write your own words of comfort. So the challenge this week is to send a card or two to someone who might be a little sad. Maybe you notice a classmate that's a little sad. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's an elderly neighbor next door that's been sad and lonely. So weekly challenge, send a card to somebody and comfort them because you are part of God's comfort. And as we close for this week, I need your help in our prayer. Again, this is a repeat after me prayer. So I will say 
I'll say a line, I'll pause, and you repeat it. Let's pray. Comforting God, thank you for our tears and how they teach us. Thank you for holding the pain that makes us cry. Thank you for crying with us. Please use us to be your comfort to someone this week. Amen. That's all for now. I'll see you soon. Bye.